we do this work because death is the most powerful thing in our lives. We have great sex education in our country, but we don't have death education. So, I mean, I so appreciate, Ram Dass is the pioneer in this work of um, really addressing not just the spiritual issues of dying as though it's a separate category, but to realize all the preparations, including durable power of attorney and so on, it's all about spirituality. How basically ignorant uh, most of us are. About death, I have been in denial. The fears and the anxieties and, and various emotions. Our lack of reconciliation with the truth of our mortality, I feel, has given rise to global suffering, consumerism, stupidity, <laughs> and the rest. I was particularly interested in was how to be with a dying person. I had a, a wonderful friend who um, was uh, helping her father die, and her father was just totally freaked out. And he was flailing and terrified, and um, she was beginning to freak out herself because she couldn't do anything for him. I mean, mm. he was just completely frozen with fear, but flailing. And she leaned over, and she remembered the this, this story of Ram Dass, and she leaned over her, to her father and she said, Dad, death is safe. And he just grabbed it. It was like the bark, the boat that would take him to the other shore. And he said those words until he died. That's great. Death is safe. Death is safe. Death is safe. You know, we're watching our parents die, many of us. Uh, dementia, a debilitation, incontinence loss of control. And what are the two biggest things you hear from dying people? I don't want to lose control. I don't want to be a burden. And actually that's one of the projects A Doorway into Light is working on in terms of training communities for people who are dying alone or dying with somebody who's completely burned out. When I was diagnosed with prostate cancer, threw her into the role of caretaker and me into a kind of dependence. I'm a hospice nurse. All you have to do is just be present for other people. You don't have to know or you don't have to teach or you don't have to answer questions. You don't have to just be present. I don't work with dying people because I'm Mother Teresa in drag. I don't do it because I'm even a nice guy. I do it because I want to awaken. And being around dying people is the most alive environment in which I can find to see the places in my own practice where I think I'm somebody solid. And it calls out the best in me. It's so unfortunate. People die and there's, they're, they'll be quiet and the, the caretakers will come talk, 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 you know, or put up their, put up little pictures of their family or trying to pull them back. And you've got to honor that, that, that moment. And it can't be pushing back, push, or pull. Uh, pull. That's the, the person's got to, that karma will do that. Yeah learning more about myself and my relationship with my mortality. On your relationships with your caregivers and, 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 and what this kind of existence, uh, the effect it has on them and, and, and what your, your, your social exchanges are, everything, everything is heightened. You have that knowledge as somebody who works in the field of death and dying, but so often you don't own it. It's not yours. It's something that is out there. And then, you know, a little catastrophe like a stroke or something else wake, awakens you to the truth that this could happen right tonight. Anybody driving out of here, gone. You look at my fears around dying, and, and I am so grateful to Ram Das and Bodhi and Leila, and, and Joan is just absolutely amazing.